Hey guys, this is Lance over at DAC Digital Arts, and um, I've had a couple requests to show you guys how to make a uh, matrix style tag signature photograph. So I'm going to kind of run you guys through that and um, just leave any questions for me in the comments, and um, I guess let's just get started. So obviously you can make your picture whatever size you want, but for this tutorial we're just going to make it um, an 800 by 600. Go ahead and name it test matrix. Okay. So first off, what we need to do is create the matrix style background. Now there's a couple different ways to do this, but uh, I'm going to show you my favorite way. We have a white background already, which is um, obviously the first step. And so we're going to go to filter. We're going to find texture. And we're going to find grain. And we're going to want to make sure it is a vertical grain. Intensity 100 and a contrast 100 so it happens to already be set up for us so you're going to go ahead and click OK next we're going to go filter artistic and find neon glow uh, the glow color I already have it set up for you guys but um, the hexadecimal code is 00FF18 and uh, that's what we're going to want to set the color picker for the glow color to be we're going to want glow size to be anywhere from 4 to 7 I'm just going to pick 5 uh, you can kind of see the different effects. It becomes hazier when it goes up and uh, just too grainy at um, a low level. So we're going to put it at 5 and glow brightness uh, around 22. I mean, give or take a couple. That uh, seems fine for right now. And our last step in making the background, we have to go to Filter, Stylize, and Glowing Edges. And even with these presets, it's starting to look pretty good. Um, but what we're going to set edge width to, um, anywhere from 1 to 3. Let's see, it doesn't really make... Oh, let's move that over. 1, 2, 3. Let's just go with 1 for kind of a low-key matrix effect. Uh, edge brightness can just stay at 7 and smoothness at 1 as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And this is our test background. Um, pretty good so far. So, just keeping in mind what our goal is, this is the background, um, it's off my dad, uh, picture after, I think, a, some kind of business meeting, but, um, anyway, that's our end goal, and, uh, this is what our background looks like right now. So next, we're gonna grab a render, um, you guys can use whatever you want, I already have this render cut out and copied to my clipboard right now, so I'm just gonna use that to show you. Um, so, what I'm gonna do is, just start it, uh, in the test matrix file, start a new layer, I'm going to go ahead and hit, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hit uh, Command V to paste the um, Control V for PC users, and there you have my dad. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll just try to recreate the same picture, going to kind of drag him over into a spot that uh, looks kind of good. Never want to have your renders in the center of pictures. I guess there's always an exception to every rule, but usually uh, for an artistic flow, you kind of want to have um, things offset from the center. Um, anyway, uh, so what we're going to do next is duplicate this layer a couple times. Yet again, um, these steps can always be changed, but this is just kind of how I made my picture. So I've got three layers, and what we're going to do we have layer one is on top, um, so then let's just go to layer two right now, and we're gonna bring just bring the opacity down to about uh, around 60%. And with that layer selected, go up to your move tool and just hit the arrow keys left a little bit, and you can see uh, part of what we're gonna what's well, gonna be the shadow of my dad popping out behind him. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the uh, backmost copy layer. Just uh, bring the opacity down even more. Last one was at 60, so this one's gonna probably be better around uh, 40. Let's go 41, whatever. And uh, yet again, move that out behind where we're at. And we actually have the layers backwards right now. What we're gonna have to do is, we want this to be the top layer. So um, we're gonna bring the faintest layer to the bottom, and then uh, this is the thickest layer, so we're gonna have that on top. So now you get the kind of a going backwards effect, if you will, of um, some kind of motion. Next, just keep
keeping you guys on track. This is kind of the same thing we did here. Looks pretty good so far. Um, then what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, I'll show you guys how to make the text. I downloaded the text. The text is called uh, Milltown. You can get it from defont.com slash milltown.font. And um, I'm not gonna show you guys how to install actual font files here, but they are .ttf. Um, so there's a bunch of tutorials on YouTube you guys can use to um, learn how to install fonts. But this is the font I use, Milltown. Go back over here, start a new layer, get our text tool, find Milltown right here. And in Milltown, you have to type in all caps. So I just put caps lock on. And let's put, uh, I don't know, Bozo. Wow, the font is huge. So we'll bring down the font size a little, probably a lot. Uh, let's just bring it down to 24. That looks fine. And, okay, so we got our font, but it's the wrong color. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight it. And let's make it kind of a green color, just like the matrix. So, got our Bozo font. <laughs> Looks decent. And then next, what we want to do is uh, duplicate this layer. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate it. It doesn't matter what the name is. And uh, let's hide that duplicated layer. Now we're going to go back to the first layer. Uh, go to filter, blur, filter, blur, geez, um, and then uh, motion blur, excuse me. Uh, you need to rasterize the type, so just go ahead and hit OK. And the settings you want uh, are angle of zero and a distance of 45 pixels. So we're just going to go ahead and hit OK on that, and that's going to give us kind of the blurred background behind the text. And then um, all you need to do is unhide that layer and um, then it kind of looks it's got that matrixy effect I'm actually going to change the color of the front font to white see how that looks yeah, yeah that looks pretty good so that's our font uh, and we just have a final couple adjustments and uh, then we'll be done with this picture I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment layer and the adjustment layer is going to be curves just to add a little bit more contrast you're going to make um, an S shape. So you're going to put a little dot right above this line right here and a little dot below the line. Move that around a little bit. Just so it looks kind of like a darker, uh, grittier feel. So that's good for that layer. And then our final layer um, will be another adjustment layer. And we're going to go to Photo Filter. And um, you're actually going to go to Color. Pick the same hexadecimal code, which is Zero zero, take out caps lock. Zero zero FF zero zero, which is that awesome neon color again. And I just hit OK. And then we are just going to jack up the density. Um, I guess you could go to 100 if you want. I'm going to go a little bit less, maybe like 84. And uh, hit OK. And that obviously my dad's name's not Bozo, but that looks pretty darn good for a matrix background. And um, I guess that's the matrix tutorial on how to make a matrix signature. Um, thanks guys for watching and tune in next time. See you later.